So today we have a really fun session with a Czech working line German Shepherd that has been trained to incredibly high levels of obedience. And it shows that even with high levels of obedience training, you can still have behavior problems. But in this session, you're gonna to get to see how we can use obedience to help us fix behavior. The worst I've seen, it was when I first took her out. Okay, so tell me uh, that story. Okay, so that, that was just sort of dusk and he almost went into a, what I call a stalked mode. Yeah. Hackles came up, head went down, she saw a dog in the distance. I gave a bit of a wide berth, but there was what would have been perceived aggression, barking, yeah. growling, Lunging. little bit of a lunge, but not much. I sort of feel if it was pure aggression, she would have meant it. Yeah. It's almost like she doesn't know how to react to that type of encounter. Yeah. This is just over a week ago, mm. but I want to get to the stage where I can walk past the dog not bad and, and there's no there's no yeah. reaction we can definitely help you with that she's really well trained she's very obedient just that little missing link at the yeah, moment definitely which, gonna which help is you with probably that. me yeah as opposed Tends to her to it's a good place that you're aware of that already so what commands has she got so she's got sit down here um a, a, a close command so if i close beautiful close and then if we walk close lovely Auto sit. Yeah, she should she should do. Yeah. She's a little bit distracted over there. From obedience, there's nothing we need to do. She's got everything we could ever need, so we just need to dial some of those things in mm -hmm. that will require a couple of corrections. Obviously, she's already prong collar trained. We're gonna change the way that's fit a little bit, which will make a massive difference. It's just a little bit too low, so we're gonna bring it right up behind the ears, and you'll be surprised what a massive difference that alone makes, just fitting it. So my theory on corrections is always, whatever level they're at, we come in just above. Yep. So with the advice you've had in the past, it's not the advice I like. So if she's showing a three out of 10, I don't jump to a nine or a 10. It's a 3.1, ideally. We can never be that perfect. Only other dogs can be that perfect with their correction, but our job is to try and be as fair as possible. If you go underneath it, it's gonna have no mm -hmm. consequence. You go too far above it, you're gonna break relationships and it's not nice. So it's just enough. And for her, it's literally just gonna be, hey, stop and then straight back to obedience that she already knows and is trained beautifully. So you're just missing that, hey stop, piece of the puzzle, which mm -hmm. we're gonna work on, and that's it. Yeah, lovely, just come nice and calm. Come on. Come, let her come right to the fence. So explain to me what the difference has been here versus other times. Because I know that this is enclosed, yeah. I'm probably calmer. Yeah, I would say if, that's, if that's if always, honest. yeah. And I know that there can be no issue because yeah. it's fenced in. Mm -hmm. I was expecting her to do a bit more than what yeah. she did, if I'm honest. In that I mean. situation where you did nothing, there was nothing. Yeah. And then if you're doing something, it's creating something, if that makes sense. And I'm gonna get Sully just a bit more height up a bit. There right. we go, yeah, lovely, so okay. just try and relax. Lovely. So that's a bit more typical. Yeah, in terms of the cases, that's not aggression. Now, don't get me wrong, I understand that if this is the first time you're seeing a prong collar, they can look bad and negative and look like we're trying to hurt the dog, but that could not be further from the truth. If, like me, you use them in as a positive way as possible and you use these tools from a place of love because you want to help your dog be calm, confident and under control and safe, then they can be one of the best tools on the planet. So that was definitely one link too loose. We really want to make sure that we have it sat high up here. Okay. So you see we're getting it right nice and high. Mm -hmm. But that's what we're looking for. Just gonna tune her up and get her engaged with me. I'm gonna give her one access to the toy very quickly and it's going away. That's more in her mind to understand, oh, he has that thing. What I always recommend with dogs like this is I would walk with one of these. See, a lot of obedience guys will pop it under their arm and that's how they get that focus heel. Right. So when you see that other dog, it can be either a little, hey, hey, up here, or you can even just do it with a name. See it, goes under and you walk, when you go a bit tense, a bit of adrenaline, a bit of cortisol's going, 100% they can smell that. So they don't have to see, they don't have to feel, just 
quarter so it's go time right what i love about tools with things like this is i'm going to explain it as if like oh this is the magic trick what i'm trying to do is give you a magic trick that then makes you be able to stay calm mm. so this is that would actually be more for you than it would be for her but if that's the tool that gets you to remain calm then we've solved the problem so orca close good so again this is you see this what we're looking for yeah so i'm letting her know it's here and then it's going in which is now giving me this guidance and direction so when that happens though which will happen when there's another dog so this is an example orca good and then it's going away so again building up a bit of that oh, okay here we go let's go good yes good sit good yes good good oh yes oh yes oh you're so scary oh yes yes good I'm going to do literally that drill. If she stays in close, I'm going to break her and reward her with this. If she breaks her close, she's going to get corrected. Okay. And that's, the, that's all you're going to do when you walk in, which is the beauty of obedience. Your corrections are fair because yeah. you know she knows what that means. Yeah. So if she's ignoring you, then you have a right to say, hey, no, listen. But again, with her, I can already say it's, it's, it's going to be minor, minor stuff. You, don't, you definitely don't need to blast her. Close. problem is if you now pull off we have a problem but still now I've asked you to do something so do it and you saw all it was was just a flick of the wrist because yeah. when I walk this is how I want to walk I want to enjoy it. I want to look up I don't want to have to be walking like this going, don't you dare don't, please don't I can feel it if she starts to go off because I'm in this position it is literally no, no more than this and it's just that hey but again I want to be able to bump into you and if you're the cameraman how's it going mate and we can have this conversation and my dog's being nice and chill there your dog's being if it's lying down if it's an inch back if it's an inch forward I don't mind I, and I'm good with that yeah I'm me good. too if they want to lie down yeah. and chill out I'm fine with that yeah whatever's distracting you that's making you break this command I've just asked from you hey stop no and then now you've been excellent. Yes, good, yes. Then we're gonna reward you. It's not always her that reacts first. Yeah. So we went out mm -hmm. yesterday. A, a schnauzer absolutely react aggressively yeah. towards her. Now she didn't good. respond. Oh, she got tense. Yeah. I probably got tense. Yeah, of Therefore course. she got tense. Mm -hmm. She wasn't as calm as she was just now. Through experience and hopefully your trust in me is that this works exactly the same. The only piece that you need to understand is that right now, Sully or the cameraman or the distractions we have are taking her to a two or a three. Mm -hmm. So your correction is that 2.1. 3.1 yeah, yeah. that schnauzer it's exactly the same behavior but it just might be taking it to a five or a six mm -hmm. so you just need to be just a little bit sterner but the principle is exactly the same right now i want you to really before you start stop again close so i want you to relax take your time head up look at me talk to me beautiful and then start just to swing out lovely again head up look where you're going i'll tell you if you need to pop her nice and close. close lovely beautiful two more steps forward and then same thing auto sit lovely and give her the toy close. as a reward for that so give yes. her a yes good girl i think what's happening just so many things are happening in your mind really quickly or maybe you're thinking about the next thing first oh and you kind of really compartmentalize it into steps and we don't move on to the next step until we've done this step right. as opposed to thinking out and then i've got to do close and if she doesn't do the close i've got to, all we're worried about right now is out okay and we've done that now close because again you i think you're just falling into that trap of out 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 oh, yeah close 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 and I mean, you're just popping a bit too soon. I want you to really just break it down, calm down, and just give her the opportunity. I want you to just give her one stern close and then bring her and let her do it. And then I'll tell you if you need to correct. I mean, you're just a little bit trigger happy before she's had chance because you're already thinking about wanting to do the next thing, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Okay, close. So, Good. Perfect. Close. So again, last time you'd have two popped her there and you didn't need to. Good girl. Yeah, perfect. Because you didn't need, you didn't need to pop her into the sit because she'll do it anyway. Mm -hmm. And then now what we could do is then I'd really tug toy with her for that. That was brilliant. That time you did zero pops and got the same result, and okay. you were calmer for it. So most of my behaviour sessions are quick, sixty to ninety minute sessions, and I'm trying to fix oftentimes very severe behaviours through to, with this case, quite a minor reactivity behaviour, but as quickly as possible. So I don't have time to work on obedience and work on a lot 
of positive reinforcement. However, that doesn't mean that I don't love it. And this is a classic example of if you put the work in, doing lots of obedience training, doing lots of positive reinforcement, and making your dog driven by food and or toys, you can use that to your advantage. And it means that you have to use less correction to achieve the desired outcome. I'm offering you as many tools as possible, and she's your dog. You choose which one you feel in that situation is most applicable. I would suggest redirecting. Yeah. And seeing how driven she is by a toy, I think that probably have more long-term success anyway. Because then in her mind, what will happen is when she sees another dog, she'll be conditioned with kind of classical conditioning to go, other dog, sweet, when am I getting it? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> and now. And again, every dog's different. Every situation's different. Every person's different. Their yeah. opinions on it are different. When I say I'm a balanced trainer, I truly mean I genuinely want to have as many tools in my toolbox to help you and your dog and the combination of those two as best as possible. Yeah. So I'd really like to break them both and let them be dogs. Let, I always like I'm to. I'm happy for you to break them both and yeah, let them be dogs. Um, yeah. So that was another really fun session at my canine sanctuary project. If you didn't know, all of my sessions at my sanctuary are completely free of charge because my mission is to keep dogs out of shelters and off of the euthanasia table. So we take on any kind of training or behavior problem with any kind of breed to be able to help the owner, but also be able to help you guys watching at home. And if you want information on how you can come to our sanctuary and get a free session yourself, come and follow me on Instagram. There'll be a link in the description box below. And over there, that's where I explain how you can apply to be a part of this incredible project but thank you for watching if you enjoyed the video make sure you subscribe i can't wait to see you here on the next episode of femory k9 training